More than 120,000 Cambodians have crossed back into their own country from Thailand in the past week, fearing a crackdown on migrant workers after last month's coup. Cambodians make up a big part of the two million strong migrant labour force in Thailand's seafood, agriculture and construction industries. But they often work for meagre pay and lack official work permits. They're apparently fleeing after a rumour that illegal foreign workers may be arrested and deported by Thailand's new military rulers. Joe Lowry from the International Organisation for Migration has been at the border and has just returned to Bangkok. Joe Lowry, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Is it actually true that these people may be deported by the Thai junta or has this exodus been triggered by a rumour? No one really knows. There's certainly strong rumours going around in the Cambodian community which people are listening to and are making their decisions to leave. Certainly I'd say that uh, for 140,000 people uh, to leave en masse within a week, uh, to leave their jobs and to go back to a country where they don't have any, any work and they, there'll be a strain on the services there. For them to leave so rapidly in such numbers, um, there must be a compelling reason. Uh, there are many migrant workers in Thailand, not only from Cambodia but also from uh, Myanmar and, and Laos notably. Are they leaving as well or is it just the Khmer workers who are departing? Uh, at the moment, uh, the information we have, the large number, large number of, of uh, migrants leaving are, are Cambodian. Um, there are some um, indication there may be smaller numbers of uh, people uh, going back to Myanmar as well. Uh, so this is the Aranya Pratet Poi Pet uh, border post. Can you just describe what sort of facilities right. are there? Because it's really uh, not sufficient to cope with this number of people, is it? No, it's not. The, the, the border post itself is right next to um, a few large casinos and hotels, but just across the, the, the border post, uh, there's just a normal uh, Cambodian border town of about 10,000 people, uh, Poi Pet, and there's a limited amount, obviously, of uh, shelter, of, of water, uh, of food, of health care. So we're supplementing that as best we can. There are uh, organisations providing water, providing food, uh, talking about setting up places for people to sleep if, if that's needed. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it, it, without, um, without that, as I said, without the trucking op operation, uh, there will be a lot more people. There will be tens of thousands of people there now, but thankfully um, it's down to a few thousand and people are getting out quite quickly. And where are those trucks taking people to? Taking them to the provincial capitals, to places like Batambang and Siam Reap and to the capital Phnom Penh itself. Um, and then people have to get back to their home towns and villages un under their own steam. And of course the concern is that uh, when they get there, uh, there won't be much waiting for them. And a lot of them have paid money to brokers to get jobs, fruit picking or in construction in Thailand. Low paid jobs, uh, jobs that pay about 8 to 10 dollars, uh, US dollars a day. And so they've also taken on a large debt, perhaps up to $1,000 to get these jobs. And that debt has to be paid back. Um, yet they're going back to, to no work and uh, perhaps uh, no services either. Yeah, it's going to put substantial pressure on those small towns that they're going back to, isn't it? Because these are probably the breadwinners uh, for many families. Exactly, yeah. And the, the whole economy um, in this region relies on uh, heavily on migrant labour, not just for, for workers themselves to, to fill jobs, but also on the remittances they send home. And of course, those remittances have, have dried up completely now. And IOM does work globally um, with people who've come back from situations like this, you know, with, with returning migrants, and we have experience in helping them with, uh, with reintegration and uh, reassimilation into their communities, helping them set up small businesses um, and so on. So we stand ready to, to do that if, if the need arises. Mm, that's going to be a big job to do quite suddenly, though, uh, I'd expect, and unexpectedly. What about the industries that these people are leaving in Thailand? How will they be affected by this sudden exodus of their workforce? Well, some of it's seasonal, um, you know, agriculture and so on, but um, you know, there, there's a lot of construction uh, projects going on in Thailand right now, um, and I guess they'll have to find uh, local solutions to that. Uh, are you now gearing up for an increasing exodus, as I said, if people from the, the Burmese community, for example, start doing the same thing? Well, that's, that, that's a big if. We just don't know um, if, that, if that's going to happen or not. Uh, what we do know is that uh, there's approximately 150 to 180,000 uh, undocumented Cambodian workers uh, in, in Thailand and uh, about 140,000 of them uh, appear to have already crossed the border at one border crossing. 
Uh, are you expecting that some of those people might return to Thailand uh, when and if the situation normalises? Hard to say. Um, I mean, it, it will be. It, they would have strong motivation to do that economically for sure. Uh, and people will take, uh, as, we, as we know from the scenes in, in, in Europe and other parts of the world, people will take st extreme measures uh, to get somewhere where they believe they can better the lives for themselves and, and for their families. Joe Lowry, thank you very much for joining us.